Yo, yo, guys, welcome to the video. And today we're looking at antennas for the Portapec uh, H2 Hacker F1. You get asked a lot of times what are some really good antennas to use. That's kind of a not really a tough question, but that's a question that's going to be per your needs and what you're doing with the Portapec H2. Okay. Before we dive any further, though, something that you really want to consider, and I, I stress this a lot in my videos, is going to a BNC. So this is an SMA to BNC adapter, okay? So you have your SMA there, right? We all know what that is. Um, get the appropriate one with the, the center pin. Make sure that you have that one. And this just converts your SMA adapter to BNC. Why is this important? Well, you may not know this, but SMA is a small threaded system, right? We know, I mean, that's pretty much what it stands for, right? It has a threaded lifespan and marrying and unmarrying is kind of how it's described is that you're really only guaranteed 500 screw on and screw offs before you start losing some um, attenuation props. Possibly your ohms may drop down. Um, your thread life just diminishes substantially. So I recommend going B and C. Save your device. Links in the description below non-affiliated, but they are down there. Okay, because it also makes swapping out antennas super easy, right? I mean, we have the CB antenna. I mean, you can go from CB, just easy as that. You want to go to uh, your 315 to 430, you know, key fob stuff right there. Look at that, bam, done, you're there. Uh, you want to hop over to a uh, little short range UHF, VHF, boom, you're done, okay? So again, Save your device, go with SMA to BNC adapter. On to antennas. Antennas matter because we need to know what the antenna is tuned for, for the band or frequency that we want to dive into, right? We discussed that earlier. This is a AliExpress 27 megahertz CB antenna. It could probably get maybe close to the 10 meter band range HF frequencies on a good day probably. I'm not gonna guarantee that, but um, it is up there in that spectrum of 10 meters. So you may be able to get 10 meters with this. Link in the description below, non-affiliate. This was like five bucks, man, for a four foot antenna. I mean, there's the end and we're still going, still going, still going. And there's the end, right? So front to end, great antenna. Uh, SMA 209 Comet, great little antenna. I was able to get APRS in my local area with this antenna. Um, these are like 15 or 18 bucks, I believe from Amazon. Um, link in the description below. Key fob, uh, so gigahertz. This guy right here, great, great antenna. I think these were uh, two pack maybe, or was it a single? Maybe a two pack for about twenty five bucks. Um, and then again, I did a SMA to BNC adapter on this one because that was just straight up SMA. So I will put the link for these adapters as well. Uh, Meshastic, right? Nine fifteen. Uh, we can't receive Meshastic, but we can look at the frequencies of Meshtastic, and you can kind of see it pulse through. Uh, best all around antenna, the telescopic, right? Uh, the one that comes with your unit, I just, and again, estimated BNC, pop that guy on there, and then you're good to go, right? Great little antenna, uh, you can do APRS, you can, uh, it's, it's a wide band range, right? So, but it's not good at sending, but it is good, at, it is decent at receiving. Rubber ducky antennas off of most HD um, handheld transceivers, right? These are a dime a dozen sometimes, or you might have one laying around. Just throw an SMA to BNC on there and you good to go. That's UHF, VHF, right? Off of a Baofeng or some other cheap Chinese radio. Uh, if you want to go a little more fancy, again, my favorite antenna is the signal stuff, signal stick. Uh, elastic, glows in the dark. It rolls up into this and it retains its memory back to being straight when you're done. It doesn't have any retained memory of being in this configuration forever, right? I've had mine and this for months on end and it's okay. Say if you want to go a little bit more fancy, we discussed this one on our APRS video. This is a handmade out of arrow shafts and a 3D printed handle. Uh, this is a Yagi antenna to element Yagi. That's that, great for UHF, VHF and possibly some satellite receiving on that guy as well. Know what you want to do with your Hacker F um, port package one before you dive into it, right? Uh, let's go with the Enfit half wave next. If, if you want to get into HS stuff, the Enfit half wave is the way to go, right? That's that nice 
wound wire round spool. Um, you can stretch it across a yard, throw it up in a tree, um, and then you can be able to get some HF frequencies with that. And then again, HF band chart, right? We go back to our USA amateur radio bands, HF 10. Uh, your 10, your 40, your 30, your 20, your 17, your 15, your 80, your 160, and your 60 meter, right? All HF is in this portion of here. UHF, VHF is down here, right? So definitely consider printing one of these out. Um, and then also look into the United States Frequency Allocation Chart. Uh, just type in United States Frequency Allocation, and you will get this chart. And this chart helps you understand where all of your frequencies are lying and what um, range they're in, okay? So if you want to get into sub gigahertz stuff, it'll tell you that. You want to get into UHF, VHF, it tells you that. Um, again, you know, garage door opener, stuff like that, that's all sub gigahertz. Uh, you got your standard radio airwaves, you know, UHF, VHF, G, GMRS, FRS. Um, these charts help out really well. And then from there, you can understand what antennas you may be needing, right? You understand your frequency range, then you can go onto the Googling device and say, hey, I need an antenna for 915, right? I need an antenna for, for 315 to 433, right? I need an antenna for CB bands, okay? Uh, you need an antenna for UHF, VHF, right? Those right there. Or you need an all-around decent antenna, the good old-fashioned telescopic, right? So, something to consider. Um, if you have your own antenna pole or mass at your house, you don't even need a mask. You can get a discount antenna. A discount antenna, um, I'll post a link or a little overlay right here. They are great at receiving multiple bands, but they are really poor at transmitting, right? But they are really great at receiving because that's all they're built for is most receiving. I mean, you're talking like full band chart receiving off of a discount. So something to consider. That is all I have for antennas. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. It really helps me out. I appreciate your support. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you a ton, and we'll see you in the next video.